Hi all. In this video, let's learn about solid principles in JavaScript. So solid principles are not just to the JavaScript. It is uh, you can apply these principles to any of the programming language. So let's understand these solid principles. So solid principles or uh, design principles, design patterns, everything, all these things we use. The main goal of these principles uh, is in any of the software systems, that software system should tolerate the changes and all adding the new functionalities should be easy to understand and implement. So these principles will help us to understand how to structure the code so that the code will be robust, maintainable and flexible, easy to test. So all this should be done in our code. Uh, we need to make our system a robust, maintainable, flexible and testable. So to make these things, we need to follow some principles, design principles. So those are known as a, here. Now we'll be discussing about this solid principles, which will help us to achieve that uh, maintaining that code structure. So let's see each principle with an example. So the first principle is solid S. Yes. It means single responsibility principle. What does it exactly mean? Single responsibility principle means, for example, if you take a function, that function should do only one function, one task, one action. It should not do multiple things in a function. We should not keep multiple things. So it means single responsibility in sense, a function or a class should have only one action, one task to be done in it. For example, here, what would be the wrong way of implementing is like, we are validating the user and we are inserting the user in the DB. So there are two tasks we are doing in a single function. Here we are validating the user and we are inserting the user in the DB. So these are the two tasks we are doing in the same function. So instead of that, as per, our, as per this principle, single responsibility principle, we need to divide these two tasks into two functions, two separate functions like below. So for example, here what we are doing, we are validating the user request. We are checking whether the user is validate or not. If he is valid user, then we are calling another function. The creation of the user should be done in another function. So that here we are writing two functions. One is to validate the user. The second one is to create the user. So this is a single responsibility. The each function, this function is for validation. This function is for the creation of the user. So in, this is about the single responsibility principle. We should not club more actions, tasks in a single function try to divide that in a single uh, separate functions. So that's uh, all about this single responsibility principle. So coming to the second principle, this is about open close principle. In the, in the, in the solid, uh, O is the second one letter. So this is about open and close. So what does this exactly mean? So you can uh, uh, remember this principle like this, open for the extensions, but close to modification. So you can remember this principle like this. What does this exactly mean? So in this principle, what uh, we are uh, trying to explain is the software system must be allowed to change the behavior. So we'll be having some behavior. We, we can change the behavior by adding the new code instead of modifying the old code and uh, breaking the existing changes. The idea of this principle is our system should provide a way to add the new functionalities by adding the new code. In, instead, rather than modifying the existing code and not to break the existing functionalities. So that's the main idea. So here, for example, so we have a functionality like this. So we have a roles and array and we are checking. So check role and we are passing some string and whether this, this function is to check whether this role is present or not. Now, this admin role is present here. So we got true. The foo role is not present. So we will be returning it as false. This is, this is a default functionality we have. What if in future, if we want to add one more role, super user role to the here. So then what we need to do. So instead of modifying the existing code. So our system should allow to add the new code. For example, I'm allowing add role. So I'm adding a new method called add role. In this role, I'm pushing the new role. 
so this is what i'm doing i am writing a new function adding a new functionality add role and i am pushing some role into this roles array so i am calling this add role and i am passing the super user so what i am doing i am passing the super user now what uh, i will check whether super user is present or not we can check here like this the same way so now what it returns it returns true so we have not touched the function functionality of earlier code we have not touched this anywhere but we have added the new role super user to the array and we have verified that as well so this is about the open and closed principle so most of the times instead of modifying the existing code it's good to add the new code such that in the future not only the super user if you want to add one more role again instead of modifying the existing array and existing functions this should be untouchable we are not touching this we are adding the new code like this in future if you get a new role as well what you are going to do you just add a role that's it you call a role and you are going to add that role so in this way it would be very much simple instead of breaking the existing changes we can do this so that is about the open closed principle so coming to lisco subscription principle so in the as per this principle so for example you have a bird class so in this bird class you have a fly method so this eagle class is extending this bird class so that this eagle class will uh, have the dive and fly both the methods will be having to this eagle class so this is simple right we have a base class and the eagle class is extending the base class and it has two functions now eagle can use both these two functions this is fine so far so good so now if we have a penguin class and which is extending the bird and penguin can't fly as a bird has a fly method penguin can't fly so here this is a problem so he this type of things we should not do what exactly this principle is doing is how it helps us is if we have a base class so this is a base class this base class it has a method and we should not extend this base class uh, to any of the other methods which are not related so penguin has no relation or it cannot extend or it cannot write function to this fly method so in this cases what exactly we need to do is we need to have a scope we need to again redesign uh, the limited limited scope of the classes so the bird should be the base class in sense it should have the very specific nature of the bird instead of fly it should have very specific nature of the bird instead of this fly if we keep the fly the penguin can't use or it it is nowhere related the fly method to the penguin but all other methods may be related to the penguin but only exact this method is not related in this case we need to uh, divide the classes in such a way that we have a scope of dividing the classes in a specific way so for example the correct way what is the correct way is write the classes so specific so this is like only uh, giving the uh, laying the eggs the bird class and write another class which is a uh, flying bird so that you have kept a fly method here in this way you have divided the classes more specific so instead of not uh, adding the functionality to not related methods you are keeping more generic classes so that it would be it has more scope to uh, give uh, the related methods instead of keeping every method in the bird class so that is what we have done here all things we are keeping in the bird class and if someone extends that it has no way relation with the fly method so instead of doing that specify the bird and specify its specific characteristics and use one more classes i am using here a one more class called flying bird and have used the fly method so in this way the eagle now eagle can extend this class all the flying bird features can be extended by the eagle and the penguin can extend the swimming bird like uh, another class extensions so in this way we are very specific and we are only implementing the classes which it exactly needs in this way the classes may be n number of classes will be getting but that classes will have the only reasonable methods to be implemented 
So in this way, this is uh, about the Liskov subscription principle. This helps us a lot in uh, making the related methods to be given to the class. So this is how it, this principle will be helping. So coming to the another principle called interface segregation principle. According to this principle, so uh, let me explain a real time uh, example of this interface segregation. So if a pure vegetarian person goes to a restaurant and uh, if he gets a menu, uh, which is included both the vegetarian and non-vegetarian items, then that is not related to that person because he's a pure vegetarian person. So giving a menu card of both included vegetarian and non-vegetarian items will not help him. Instead of that, this interface segregation principle will be explaining like that, we need to have two menu cards. So based upon the uh, customer requirement, so whether he's a uh, vegetarian, so we need to give the menu card, which is respective to the vegetarian person. So, so that, that we'll be having two menu cards for the vegetarian person, there will be separate menu card. And for the non-vegetarian person, it would be a separate menu card. So there will be two different menu cards. That is the that's a real time example. So this is about the interface segregation. We are segregating the things here. So the wrong way of implementing this. Now we have a user class. In this user class, we'll be having one method here, initiate user. So where, where whenever you create the user, you are initiating this method. This method will be called internally. This method again calling the validate user. So this happens whenever you create a user, when a, the constructor function automatically it invokes and automatically you're calling all these all these two functions. You're in, initiating the user, you're validating the user. So instead of that, have a flag. Like uh, we have like, uh, uh, he's a vegetarian or a non-vegetarian. So like keep a flag, true. So like if he's a vegetarian, okay, now a real world example. So based upon that, so validate that whether he is a vegetarian, so then only initiate it. So if you want to validate a user, then only you validate it. Instead of validating each and every user, you can have the seg uh, segregation here. If it is necessary, then validate the user. Then, then only you are calling here. So in the constructor function, we are not calling this initiate user every time. Based upon the flag, true or false, only we are segregating this function, whether to initiate the user, validate the user or not. Based upon this, we are doing this. Some of the users, they no need to validate. So that's the reason this principle helps us to segregate the interfaces in this way, whether to call. So here, if you see for each and every user, you're initiating the user and validating the user, even if it is needed or not. So in that way, you have segregated your interface. That is a wrong way. Here, based upon a flag, we are segregating whether to validate the user, whether to initiate the user or validate the user. Based upon that, we are validating. So this is uh, about uh, this interface segregation principle. This is the way we need to implement that. Coming to the last principle, D, that is dependency inversion principle. So uh, understand this is not same as dependency injection. Dependency injection is something different from dependency inversion. This is completely different. The real world example for this dependency inversion is, so if you have a TV remote, the TV remote will work, it needs battery, but it is not dependent on which company battery, which brand battery we are going to use. It just need the battery, that's it. It means the TV remote is loosely coupled with the battery company. It needs battery, but it is not tightly coupled with the brand of the battery. It works well if it has a battery. So that is all about this dependency inversion. For example, so here we have an API call. You are calling an API call. And in that API call itself, you are keeping all the related. You are setting the states and you are sending this data to the API call. Okay, fine. So instead of that, all this setting we need to do in a separate function like this. It means now we are tightly coupled. This API call is tightly coupled with this data set, setting of this data. Instead of that, if you do the passing the data in a separate function, so this helps us a lot. So in the future, 
some other API call also can use the same function. So they also can use the same function. And also you're not tightly coupling this uh, dependency of this data here in the API call. You have segregated, you have kept this de um, dependency apart. So this is all about this dependency inversion. The other API calls also in future, if they want to use the same things, they can use it. Instead of again doing the same in their API call, they can just call this API function like this. In the different functions on different API calls also, they can directly use this. So in this way, the dependency inversion, what it exactly tells, it, it will tell us to loosely couple the things. So, and also this is not equal to the dependency injection. So this is, uh, these are all the solid principles we have discussed. So we need, it is our uh, responsibility to implement these principles in our projects so that our project will be robust, maintainable and flexible. So hope you understand the video. Thanks for watching.